What's going on everyone, it's Chanel Taro bringing you the SDL Season 4 Playoff Round 1 Battle versus Coach Cell and the Winchester Whimsicots. Now for week 1 of the playoffs, we are going into very positive, being at the second spot in our uh, division, uh, right behind Loris, and we do take on Cell. And uh, Cell, we did face week 1, and we did get a 5-0 uh, win, but it was kind of a little bit of a haxy battle, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, with the rematch, I personally hate rematches because that's when the better builds come out and um, it's basically like you have to figure out how their answers, um, what their answer to your previous team is going to be and then sometimes they can just expect that and then they just prep for that so like it's a little bit of confusion in mind games but at the same time like rematches just are a little bit harder but I mean that's what playoffs are all about basically. Um, so looking at Cell's roster if we do not remember it, it consists of Jirachi, Togekiss, Araquinid, Donphan, Medicham, Raichu, Mega Absol, Curum Black, Nihiligo, Trevenant, and Typhlosion. Now, when I was looking at the team build, um, I really only brought one set that was the exact same as before, which was my Tangrowth. Um, and the other ones were um, new that I felt like were going to be very important. Um, when I was looking at Cell's roster, I was really expecting a Scarf Nihiligo, a um, Spidaf Jirachi, um, kind of like a mixed Togekiss with um, Poison Barrier in order to live from a Mega Beedrill. Um, I was also expecting like Curum Black because it still did a lot of damage versus my defensive core and um, I was either just like probably like Dawn Fan or Trevenant either one of those two to be a Coco answer like he did before and um, lastly I was expecting a um, Mega Absol like mix with um, Knock Off Sucker Punch and like Thunderbolt and uh flamethrower um so i was definitely not expecting like the um metacham and the typhlosion on the screen i was like what these two tier four pokemon are doing here this is kind of confusing but um as for my team build i had a um life orb coco um this coco had thunderbolt grass knot hidden power ice wait no sorry thunderbolt grass knot um dazzling gleam and uh rave bird this basically just destroyed his entire team. Like, that simple. Um, just like it did last time. Like, he hardly has an answer for Coco. Which is, um, very helpful. But at the same time, it's like, I have to make sure I keep Coco healthy. Because there's going to be multiple answers to this thing. Um. So, definitely was going to do a lot of work for his team. But I also had to be careful with it. Surprisingly. And then, um, we have Milotic next. This was defensive with some spadef, just in order for me to be able to take on, like, some special attackers if needed. Because Togekiss was kind of a problem last time, since he is, since he was a Scarf variant. Um, we have Recover, Toxic, Skull, Nice Beam, very basic set, but that's what Milotic runs best. And it has the Wakamberry, because he has a lot of electric answers that I feel like I can take on Milotic with. Milotic did a decent job versus him last time, so I'm definitely expecting him to have, like, more electric type answers, because I am giving him electric terrain. Um, whether that be, like... Um, I believe Nihiligo gets Thunderbolt. Um, Thunder Punch from Metacham, Thunderbolt from Absol, um, stuff like that is definitely going to be a problem. So I definitely felt like that'd be helpful for Milotic. And then next up we have Duck Trio, Focus Sash Trapper, very basic, Earthquake Stone Edge, Stealth Rock Toxic. Um, this just trapped a majority of his team and was gonna, at least going to help me take care of one major threat on his team. Um, Stealth Rocks are always helpful for his team, of course, which I really should have gotten up at one point. Um, Toxic, of course, allows me to get that on Togekiss in case it's not a heal bell set, and I do get to scout for that if necessary. And if he is one, it would allow me to get a free switch in in Top of Coco and rain more damage on his team. Um, next up is that defensive tank growth that I had from the week one with Rocky Helmet. This is like Giga Drain, Earthquake, Leech Seed, Knock Off. Um, Rocky Helmet just basically walled any physical Pokemon that he had. And uh, next up, we had a little Marowak with some HP, but mainly attack adamant with some speed. Um, this had Shadow Bone, Flare Blitz. Um, was it Shadowbone, Flare Blitz, Stone Edge, and Flame Charge? Uh, this basically did a decent amount of work, and if he wasn't expecting the Flame Charge, like he was just trying to stack something that I could get a plus one speed boost, and then I would be able to outspeed a, um, all the way up to like a bulky Jirachi, which isn't like my, too crazy versus team, considering he will have a Scarf versus my team, of course, and um, he does have a decent amount of speed in, investment in Pokemon. Um, but Ola Marowak could still do some work. I just opted to do that over like some other Pokemon on my team. And then uh, him on top, we have a bulky AV set with um, HP and um, some spadef, but in the rest of the attack. Very often, since it does a lot versus team with Technician. Um, I had Close Combat, Bullet Punch, Rapid Spin, and Earthquake. Um, 
definitely felt like this was going to be good because uh, last time he kind of went on the physical side and he definitely needed to go special attack against me. And I definitely saw that, especially at the, um, just the look at the team in the beginning, like Nihiligo, Togekiss, um, Absol, which I knew would probably be special mix, and Typhlosion, those are all typically special attacks, so I know him on top is going to do a lot in this game. Um, but looking at it, I definitely want to leave Dogtrio because it traps literally everything on his team except Togekiss, and it can basically get a kill on everything. Um... So that's what I did, and he led Nihiligo, and um, I was really expecting this thing to be Scarf, but that was a failed assumption because whenever you see a Metacham 9 times out of 10, it is Scarf. The 10th time, it's probably Choice Ban. But versus a team with my speed, that is definitely a Scarf Metacham. But I still felt like, oh, this is a Scarf Nihiligo, I get a free kill immediately. So I click Earthquake. But of course he shed shell, so I should have the prediction, also because he could have been a um, Stealth Rock Toxic Spike lead by leading off with it, because typically I don't bring any hazard removal. Like my hazard removal is um, hit him on top, and then what was my defog? Latios. I think that was all I had for hazard removal for this team. So that's probably what it was, was just um, Stealth Rock, Toxic, Spikes, and then two attacking moves like Sludge Wave and um, Power Gem. So I should have made that prediction there, but at the same time, it's whatever. Like if I thought I could have killed it, I could have killed it. Um, but then he goes to Togekiss, and I go to Milotic being the main answer, and he once again is that Trick Choice card set. Which is smart, because I don't really have switch to this thing, and then Milotic is screwed for the rest of the game. Which sucks. We take an Air Slash here, and I'm going to make a double into Coco, being able to eat an Air Slash if needed, and can take on like anything on his team if I want. We just go for a hard, hard T-Bolt here, as he goes for... Um, the icy wind reducing my speed. This doesn't mean Jirachi will be able to outspeed me this turn. So I decided to make a switch into my um, Old Marowak as he opts to go into Nihiliga. And right here I go into my ideal switch and hit him on top. So he goes for the power jump. Right here, 9 times out of 10, I felt like I could click um, Bullet Punch here. Because 1, it does a lot of damage versus Nihiliga. 2, his only switch into this necessarily is the Togekiss. He could go hard and Metacham if he wanted, um, but Togekiss is the ideal switch in, but he does not go into that and he opts to go into Jirachi. I guess knowing he would live a close combat, or if he was just planning on sacking it, but allows him to just go for a Doom Desire. I'm like, wait, what does Doom Desire even do? <laughs> like, like I just never see it ran and then I like, I forget like, oh, that's Jirachi's like special move. It's a massive future site that does steel damage, so I'm like, okay, this man's gonna have me thinking now and put me in a really bad position. I respect that. So then he goes Metacham here, and I'm like, oh crap, I have to make a switch. So I go hard Tangrowth as he actually misses the Zen Headbutt, which sucks, because that would have done nothing and he would have taken Rocky Helmet. But then I make a hard switch into my Lodic, knowing the Steel Strike's gonna come. Of course, he can freely go for it, because it will basically KO me, and if it doesn't, I mean, I'm Scarf Milotic, but I can't get off or recover because he's Scarf Metacham. And this is where game comes because I go Tangrowth here. Metacham does so much versus my team. Like, it honestly wins to a point to where when Tangrowth's gone, he wins. And look at that. He's got Nihiligo, Typhlosion, Togekiss, and I mean, even Absol can do some damage if it has the Flamethrower. Like, all those are great answers to Tangrowth. Why would he stay in with Metacham when he has great answers? So I was going to hard switch into Coco and get a lot of offensive pressure. And he just clicks Zen Headbutt. And Coco goes down. And that's when I know I couldn't really win at this point. Like, I could, but I couldn't. Like, it just made it very tough. And I'm just forced to go for Elite Seed here, as I know he's going to make a switch anyways in the Togekiss. Go for Elite Seed. I don't know why I assumed I'd live at Air Slash, but I stayed in. I really didn't care at this point. Like, I knew I was outplayed and I lost. But, um, opted to go Dougie. Just go for Stone Edge, because I can KO whatever wants to come in afterwards. If he opts to switch. And this is when he goes hard Medi, and I'm really just clicking Earthquake here. Uh, as he brings me down to my Sash, of course. No flinch. But Earthquake only does this much. I don't know why I didn't have Sucker Punch when I knew he was going to bring Scarfers. That was the dumbest thing in the world. Especially when I'm a Sash Dougie. I should have brought Sucker Punch, because that would have killed Medi from where it was at. Which um, would have put me back in the game, like 100%. Because um, nothing outsped Doug Trio at this point. Doug Trio could have clicked Earthquake on literally everything. Unless it was Sucker Punch Absol. But, um, yeah. <laughs> so that sucked because that would have actually been helpful. But, I mean, my prep was my prep. I prioritized getting a Toxic on Togekiss over priority. 
Let me just go into Marowak here. Only thing that can live is on Headbutt from where it's at. As I want to go for Flame Charge, and of course, I forget he has a Typhlosion with Flash Fire, because what's a Typhlosion? That's never brought to, or drafted. And he goes for the Earthquake, does a lot of damage as we get Stone Edge and we just kill it. But now he can freely go into Nihiligo here, get off the Power Jump. He gets the um, boost in his Spadef, showing he was um, a more bulky set probably with the Hazards. And he goes for a Sludge Wave, Assault Vest him on Chain, absolutely eating that up. But he can freely go into Metacham here. Um, I calc this earlier, this is why I was stating with Dougie and stuff like that. But um, Bullet Punch did not kill from where Medi is at right now, unless I got a crit or if he was a minus defense nature. It had a, actually no, it could kill depending on where he was at. The max roll was 29.6. I don't know if he was close to there, but um, I feel like he might have had a little HP investment or something like that. Because most things do. Most people don't, when they team prep, just go max attack, max speed when it comes to like Scarfers. Um, they'll just, you know, go as much Scarf as they need. Um, probably just enough to outspeed um, Mega B is probably what he went, or just enough to outspeed like, well, anything I would scarf would already outspeed Meta Champ, so it'd be kind of pointless. So he probably had HP left over to where it didn't even matter. Bullet Punch only does three. Crit would have been a closer game, but he did say he had play rough with Mega Absol, so I was gonna go down anyways. So I actually I was gonna lose that battle 1-0 even if we did get the crit with the Bullet Punch, and I got outplayed like crazy that game. So. Um, props to sell. Um, I was hoping for like a battle for that with um, first week with them, but got a little hexy. And then also, these team, this uh, team build was just based off you know week one. So like, that's just how rematches go. You got to build with how, how it went before, and you have to know your opponent. Like I really don't agree with that Zen headbutt play on um, like versus Tangrowth. I really don't agree with it. Um, I forget he explained the reason why. I don't remember what it was though. I don't think it was he actually predicted that I was gonna hard switch. If he did, good for him, but I think he had another reason. Um But either way, got outplayed. I got destroyed by a scarf medi, which I should have known it was gonna be a scarf medi at the beginning. Um I actually don't know why. I think I assumed it was double scarf with Nihiligo and Medi or something like that. But um either way, it was an unfortunate loss. And that'll be it for the SDL this season, so very very sad, but we do have a league starting up with the PMU D League. Make sure to check out that draft analysis if you haven't already. And in three weeks, we'll be um, approaching APA playoffs. Whether or not we make that, we have to win at least two um, of our coming uh, three weeks left. We have to win two games because these are all divisional games, so they matter more than anything. I am seven and two right now, but it does not matter because these division games are close. Even if I um, got that win against um, Tom, it would even I would still need to win two of these games, which is kind of ridiculous, just about. Um, if I only won one, then I would tie and stuff like that, but it would be very close. But uh, that will be it for me for the STL this season. I will not be recording it next season, as I will be focusing on just APA and then the PMUD League. But um, I will still probably, I will still be playing, not probably, I will still be playing with the um, STL League and maybe be uploading uh, Season 6. So look forward to that. Um, sub, like, share, deuces.